Well folks, welcome back to our journey through the Psalms uh, each day. Uh, today moving on to, to Psalm 8, uh, a Psalm of David. Uh, so let's read it together uh, and then we'll take a, a short uh, and brief look through the, the Psalm. And uh, let's read the Word of God together. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established your strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. In September uh, past, Ruth, my wife and I, uh, were, were blessed to be able to go out to the Middle East uh, to visit a few friends in Qatar, uh, in the desert. Uh, and while we were out there, we, we were able to go to the, to the National Museum, uh, a beautiful, beautiful building, uh, wonderful in size and design. The, the architecture was just um, incredible. Uh, the design of the building, wonderful. Uh, and, and we went into it, a big grand foyer, paid to get in, uh, went up the escalators, massive hallways, uh, decorated with artwork uh, and just the, the most wonderful thing that the countries had to offer uh, on display. Uh, and we went into the first room of the museum and it was wonderful. It was, it was a museum documenting the entire history of the country. Uh, everything where, where they started from nothing and have grown into a, a global power uh, because of their, their wealth. Uh, and so we went into the first room, the very beginnings of the country, all that was in the country. And, and it was great. It was a sizable room uh, and it, it, we had a great time looking around it and, and we couldn't figure out where to go after and we had been around the room didn't know know where to go next and we thought that was maybe it that that was the museum just one room from the outside it, it looked massive and grand and when we went in it, it just seemed to be one room so we came back out the door we went in and back onto the the huge hallway and we're looking around until one of the employees said no no there's a, a passageway around the back of the room there's another way through and it then took us another couple hours to get round the, the rest of the, the, the museum as we moved from room to room and found a passageway around the, the back of a display and, and we were able to walk around everything. And I think that this psalm is kind of like that. At first glance, it kind of just looks like uh, one room and there's maybe one or two things in it that we don't understand and um, we're looking around of where to go with it and, and what to do with it and there's a wrong way to do it it was wrong for us to think that there was just one room one one view of the the museum inside there was so much more to offer and so there is a wrong way to read this psalm the wrong way to read it is to say, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. And we think, yep, great part of the Bible will give glory to God and, and his majesty. And then we go on to, out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. And we think, well, don't really understand that part. Don't really know what it's getting at, what it's about. And so it's just one verse. And so we'll skip over that and move on. And we go to, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, we think, wonderful, yep, great, all that God's done. And we move on and we say, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. And we think, now we're getting somewhere. 
now we're talking about me getting glory and honor and we go on and we say you have given him dominion over the works of your hands and we think wonderful great thank you we're we're getting dominion over the earth we're getting power we're getting rule we're getting glory we're getting honor we are getting all this stuff and it's sounding really good for us he says you've put all things under his feet and and goes on to list all the animals and all that that we have dominion over and we think great this is really good for us this psalm's really good for building me up but this is the wrong way to read the psalm there is a beautiful exuberant much better way to to read this psalm and we'll look at that now the correct way to read it the, the We'll begin with the bookends. The very first thing that we read, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So we start with that phrase and we also finish in verse 9 with that phrase, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. And it tells us that everything in between these two sentences is about those two sentences that are the same. O oh Lord, our Lord how majestic is your name and so this psalm is all about the majesty of god his glory his majesty him being on high and so we want to focus on the majesty of god in this psalm not just about us not about what we are given not about uh, who we are but rather who the lord is and so if we look closely there's two main sections uh, of this psalm the the first section being that confusing part about the the babes and infants now uh, we don't really at first glance see what it's about and then the second part about the the work of the lord's hands the what's man that you're mindful of him and then all the, that man is over the the dominion but if we look closely there is actually the same pattern in both sections we look at the end of verse 1 and verse 2 and we read, You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. And then the second section we see, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, the creation, what God has done. And then he says, What is man that you're mindful of him? In light of creation, in light of all this beauty, and in view of the splendor of creation, what is man that you're mindful of him? And yet, look at what God has done for us. Look at, uh, at the position we hold as human beings. And so the pattern is the glory of God on display, the, the majesty of God, the glory of God exalted. Secondly, the weakness of humanity. And then thirdly, a strange outcome. So we see the glory of God exalted in the glory above the heavens and the works of your fingers. We see the weakness of humanity in, in babes and infants, the, the tenderest, the, the ones of us who need most care. And what is man in light of creation that you're mindful of him? The weakness of humanity. And thirdly, a strange outcome. Strange because out of the mouths of babes and infants you have established strength, stilling the enemies and the avengers. And thirdly, strange, because in, in light of creation, in light of, of how small we are as mankind in creation, yet we have been given dominion and power and glory and honour. It's strange. But it's the pattern of scripture. It's what continually happens through the Bible. God rules the world and displays his glory through the weakness of man. And as we will come to see now, it's the gospel. This psalm is the gospel. And it's wonderful to see. So we'll dive into the, the first little section here uh, and how to make sense of this. What is this all about uh, the, out of the mouths of babes and infants? And so our first port of call to do when we don't understand scripture is to look at other scripture to see what it says about it. And thankfully, Jesus Christ himself used this psalm uh, on Palm Sunday as he came into Jerusalem. So we'll flip over to Matthew chapter 21 for a minute and just read from there. Uh, just a couple of verses, Matthew 21, 12 to 17. 
And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. And they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. And so here we have Palm Sunday. Just before this, Jesus has, has told his disciples to, to go on ahead, find a, a colt donkey uh, for him to, to ride on and for him to come into Jerusalem. And we see this pattern again, the same pattern that we see in this psalm. The glory of God, the majesty of Jesus Christ on earth. In weakness, in humility, riding on a donkey into the city. On his way to be betrayed, on his way to be murdered, on his way to be crucified. And the strange outcome that we will come to. But just before that happens, we, we read this passage and, and, and Jesus quoting this psalm, Psalm 8. And what we have are, are children in the temple. Uh, Jesus comes into the temple, uh, brushes aside and gets rid of all those who were using his temple for, for the wrong thing. The temple was there to, to worship God and, and people were making a profit from it. People were making money from it. And Jesus drives them out and says, this is not what the temple is for. And the children respond. The children cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. And the scribes and the Pharisees frown and they, they, they're they the most intellectual, they're the most knowledgeable, they're the ones who have studied the scriptures, they're the ones who have spent their lives learning the law, reading the Bible, memorizing it, being able to recall it at a moment's notice. And these children are around saying, Hosanna, who Jesus has arrived in the temple and they cry, Hosanna to the son of David. And the scribes and the Pharisees say, Jesus, do you, do you not hear what these children are saying and it's as if Jesus just says yes I hear them have you never read Psalm 8 do you not know your Bible he says to them and he quotes Psalm 8 and says out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise and we don't hear of the scribes and Pharisees until the next day they disappear from this storyline until the next day until they come to him and they ask him, by what authority do you do these things? Because they know that this psalm, preparing praise must be directed to God. And if Jesus says that these children are praising him, he is claiming to be God. And so they know that they have a situation on their hands. Jesus Christ, in humility, riding in a, on a donkey into the city, to be king, to be crowned king. And so just like the, the museum uh, in, in Qatar, we've moved on to another room. We've seen a more in-depth view of, of this little segment out of the mouths of infants and babies you, you've prepared praise. And so we move on to another room uh, and we go and look a little deeper into the next passage uh, in Psalm 8, verses 3 to 8. And what we see is the creation order in Genesis. We see uh, what God has done. If we look back to it, David records, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. Now David used to be a shepherd. He used to be out in the fields in the middle of the night. He used to see the starry sky, the clear skies of the Middle East, the beauty of it, the skyline, the sunsets, the stars, the stars in motion through the night. And he was aware of this. And he says, when I look at this, the, the work of your fingers, we know through the scientists how many 
billions of stars there are and they're only the ones that we can see and David says it's the work of your fingers it's not even your arms your torso your your legs your your full body working to produce this but rather the works of your fingers he says look at the beauty of creation look at all that is around us even we look around us in the past couple of weeks and the beautiful weather that we've had the ability to be able to look out and see it and be part of it and we see the blue skies and the rolling hills and david says when i look at your creation what is man that you're mindful of him what like we're so small we're insignificant what is man that you consider him but that order this creation order that we know of in genesis and is repeated here in psalm 8 that order that God had put in place, we have broken with sin. And so that's a problem. Because this is only partially true for us now. As humans, uh, intrinsically, we are still worth more than any animal. Any beast of the field, any anything in the ocean, anything in the fields, anything in the air. We, as human beings, have an elevated position above all that because we have been created in God's image. And so we still have partial truth in that for ourselves. But total dominion is not ours. Total power is not ours. We are not perfectly glorious. We are not perfectly crowned with honour. Because we are sinful. We have difficulty working the land. We see that in part of the, the consequences of sin coming into the world. Whenever God spoke to Adam in the beginning. And he said because of your sin life's going to be really difficult for you now. It's going to be really hard. Things are going to go wrong. And so what do we make of this? How can scripture say this? How can the Bible say this? And it only be partially true. Well, again, once more, we move to the New Testament and we see from Scripture how Scripture is used and what it means. And this time we go to the book of Hebrews and just a few verses from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 to 9. Now, it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come of which we are speaking it has been testified somewhere what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him you made him for a little while lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet now in putting everything in subjection to him he left nothing outside his control at present we do not yet see everything in subjection to him but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honour because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. And so the writer of the Hebrews once again brings this pattern to us, this pattern of the glory of God, the weakness of mankind and, and the strange outcome. And we see that pattern here again and we see the pattern of the glory, the majesty of God on display in Jesus Christ on earth. But in weakness, veiled on earth, he humbled himself. He, he became lower for a little while than the angels and stood on earth with us. And then the strange outcome despite the maker of earth coming to earth and humbling himself to a position he did not have to do he gained glory he gained for us through death glory and he gained for us these things that we have read in psalm 8 through death through suffering this is what jesus has perfectly redeemed Total dominion is his. Total authority is his. He is crowned with glory. He is crowned the king of kings. He has all things subjected under his feet. And so this psalm is perfectly true of Jesus. This psalm is all about Jesus. And it's wonderful. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. 
than Jesus, though we were sinful, though these things are not perfectly true of us, still made himself lower than the angels for a little while. Suffered, suffered death, just as the, the writer of the Hebrews wrote here. He tasted death for everyone. Tasted death for everyone. This pattern, the majesty of Christ, his suffering and death, and crowned in glory. And so this is the gospel. Can you say with David, O Lord, our Lord? Can you today say that he is our Lord, my Lord? If so, may we each day and this day say with the babes and infants, Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the king of kings. Hosanna to the Lord of lords and praise him. If you cannot say, our Lord, my Lord today, might I encourage you to, to read this psalm a couple more times. Read Matthew 21 and 22 again. Read Hebrews chapter 2 again. And see these marvellous truths. See these wonderful things that God has done for us. Because it is the gospel. That the creator God. Although he created all these things. Although we sinned against him. Although we have destroyed his creation. Stepped into that creation in humility and in weakness. Riding on a donkey. Having the children cry after him, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. And as he rode into Jerusalem, he was crucified. He was beaten and mocked and scorned for our sins. He was lifted on the cross and suffered the wrath of God for our sins that we deserved. And yet the writer of Hebrews tells us from this psalm that he suffered and he died so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for us in our place so that we don't have to taste it. So that we could be united with him. So that we can say, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. And so we praise him and so we worship him and we give him thanks. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. How you have set the glory above the heavens. And we thank you that out of the mouths of babes and infants, praise rises to you. And Lord, we come to you in thanks for what you have done for us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for these psalms that are so saturated in truth, saturated with the gospel saturated with hope hope that we have because of jesus and so lord may you remind us continually of these truths the truths of christ the truths and the, the what he has done for us we thank you thank you lord we pray in jesus name amen